So narrowing down your hunting camo can be a pretty daunting task. And there's a lot of different varieties that are out there that can either be inexpensive or very expensive. And trying to figure out that one particular one that's going to work for a broad range of, uh, of, of hunting areas or, or hunting landscapes is going to be pretty difficult. So what I've done for my own little experiment is I've set up a number of different scenes that I can put different camo patterns in. I can look to see how they conceal themselves in, uh, in different locations. And for my particular uh, scenario, I'm trying to get one pattern that really works in a broad range from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast uh, or to the Western Mountains. And uh, so I'll just go ahead and introduce the ones that I'm doing. So in my first scene, this is the probably a Kansas CRP field. Is during the spring season uh, for uh, turkey hunting season. So the first one you'll see, which is going to be the uh, uh, the Cuyo uh, Vias, uh, the Cuyo uh, Verde 2.0, the First Light Cipher, uh, followed by the Fusion. Then you'll have the Under Armour Baron and the Under Armour Forest. And the Sitka Open Country, the Sitka Elevated 2, and Sitka Subalpine. So now that you've been introduced to them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them in a number of scenes. Uh, the first scene is going to be a uh, it's going to be a stony outcropping in the peaks of the Appalachian Mountains around the October time frame. Um, so take a look at how they set in. Uh, they'll maybe in different orders than what I've just listed, but you'll be able to see them uh, without any kind of indication as to what they are, and then they'll pop up. So you will be able to determine which ones stand out for your particular area the most and which ones really blend in. And then uh, you may be able to determine, which is what I'm trying to do, is which one fits the broadest range of uh, of landscape for the scenario. So let's take a look at scene number two, which is a stony outcropping in the peaks of the Appalachians. <laughs> Scene three is the rolling sand hills of Nebraska during spring turkey hunting season. So you'll be able to see each one of these and how they blend in. So take a look.
Little Bighorn. You see a little moose in there. It still has his velvet on uh, during late summer. Uh, so if this is a, a scenario that you're looking for, uh, take a look at how this camel blends in. This is an image from one of my game cameras during uh, well, the winter time frame during, in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, go ahead and see how they blend into this particular landscape. summer Appalachian foothills, uh, a lot of green on the trees, um, but you'll be able to see how each one of them blend. This is late summer uh, in the Rocky Mountains. Uh, it's a heavy forested area. Actually see the elk that's in the photo still has its velvet on, but there they are.
late summer, very open mountain range, a little sagey, stony, uh, very grain type background. Um, but let's see how each one of them blends. This is a New Mexico heavy sage uh, with green conifers. Uh, see how each one of them blends in here. Finally, from my own closet, I've gone out, and this is winter time frame, I've taken some home dyed camo that I got from Goodwill. Uh, I actually dyed it with uh, some dark brown and dark green, I think even black, uh, to give it a uh, just a different look than what it really is. Um, then some real tree uh, camouflage, so the ones that they decorate that look like they're the actual trees, so you're walking around with this tree canvas on. Then the Sitka Open Country and the Under Armour Forest. You can see how each one of those kind of blend in. So after seeing a few of those things, I'd like to show you what I've got going in here. So here's the, here's the self-dyed uh, army camel that I got from Goodwill. And it blends in pretty good to a green, dark background. So, I mean, if th this could be an option if you're on a very limited budget and you just want something that blends in. Um, or if you are might be a serial rapist, this is the 60s camo, uh, works pretty well, it blends in pretty good in a nice green environment. Um, and here is the, well this is the Under Armour Forest, and I actually killed this guy this, this fall, still hunting from about 20 yards. So as he turned, he looked directly at me, he didn't see me. Uh, he knew something was up, but, you know, I blended in perfect to the background. This is, of course, in the Appalachian Mountains. The, uh, the, the background was green. I wasn't moving. I had snuck in nice and quiet, and he just happened to not see me. Um, what I'm moving towards, because I'm looking for a more um, national-type hunting environment, so I'm looking for something that will work in multiple situations, I've actually gone with, believe it or not, open country. And it, uh, the thing about Sitka in this open country is that it's a system. Everything kind of fits together. It's very well made. Uh, it's, it's meant to be out in the elements. And so it works out pretty well for what I'm doing. Um, so hopefully with what you've seen, uh, it makes sense to you or it, it, it looks like you can make those choices and, uh, and helps you make your uh, hunting camo selection uh, a little bit easier for the, for the future hunt.
Now, one last thing before anybody says anything, I'm not recommending any one product. Um, any one of them are going to work. What I'm telling you is just to make you know the best decision for what works for you financially, um, what suits the environment that you're going to be hunting in. And uh, as long as you stay still and are comfortable uh, and quiet, then you know you should be successful as far as camouflage goes. Um, when you buy them, you know buy them from a local place. Don't don't buy them just from you know a gigantic online store. Support your local guys. Uh, I bought some of mine from Linton from uh, from out in Idaho, and I'm on the East Coast. So, you know, really this is just to make it to where you can see all these different ones in these different categories. I'm sure that uh, First Light is great. I'm sure that um, uh, Kui was great. I'm sure that in the right situation, Under Armour is great. Uh, and uh, and same thing with Sitka. Uh, the reason why I chose Sitka over the others is because over here on the East Coast, those others that are that are bigger on the West Coast or in the Midwest for hunting aren't available for me to try on, and so I can't necessarily just go put them on. So I had a better uh, touch and feel than I did with uh, the other brands, and so that's why I ended up buying that particular brand. And and the open country, someone some people may think, well, that doesn't necessarily match, but no, I'll I'll show I'll throw a couple of clips up here or a couple of shots of me in the woods with uh, the Sitka Open Country in a densely forested country, but in the in the really in the winter time frame of uh, Appalachian, specifically in the foothills of uh, of North Carolina. So take what you can out of the uh, out of the video. Go back, rewind, stop. Uh, every single one, the one that you're interested in, see how it works in those different scenarios, and uh, you know, leave me some comments. Let me know how uh, uh, how this may have helped you, or if you want me to add any other ones to it, I certainly can. I can get their images and I can put them in. Uh, one thing to take to keep in mind is that these are the images from the manufacturer's catalog, so it's going to be bright. You know, you're going to have that bright catalog light in there and it's not necessarily going to be the same light that's in the forest and I could spend some time doing that but then I kind of feel like I was altering the photo to make it look best for that particular scenario so let me know what you think um, you know subscribe if you want I really don't put out that many but go ahead and do it um, and uh, let me know